Hello. Hello. This week's video, we're going to talk about our battery drama. So this week's video is a bit different for us. It's not something we normally show on our channel. Normally our channel is all very nice and light and fluffy and we show you the nice trips and the bits and pieces. There's very little drama really. Um, personally, because I think there's plenty of that in the world as it is. So I much prefer just to make videos that are uh, light, light entertainment, shall we say. Yeah, just the nice highlights usually. But Caroline said we should share this one with you because genuinely it's, a, it's something that happened to us. Some, some of the behind the scenes stuff. And she's, she's right, so you can see the full, the full life of camper vans. Um, so, I'll explain the background and we'll talk about what happened. So, we were just about to head off to our trip to Wales last week, um, which we put a link up so you can see in the video there if you've not seen it already. And two days before, went to the van just to check something. It was on charge, I was charging the battery up. And I turned the power off and turned the lights on and the battery voltage dropped significantly, it dropped to below 10 volts, um, which is generally indicates there's a problem because the battery had been on charge. So, decided to charge it up 48 hours just to make sure there's nothing wrong with it. Um, turned it off and it still did the same thing and this was a day before we are due to go to <laughs> Lady Margaret's which was fun so we'll talk about what happened next but yeah so bit of, bit of searching online bit of panic um, realized I needed a new battery um, completely my fault I forgot to charge it in December so after our, our battery maintenance video were released previously I know bearing in mind we'd done all the you know we'd done the video and we thought we we thought we knew what we were doing yeah um, I, we went away uh, for a weekend and I, was, I wasn't able to charge the battery and it was during that minus 10 spell um, so the battery wasn't charged or put on solar for probably three weeks um, which at that point it was uh, it was it was too late. The battery's already three and a half years old, probably nearly four years old. So we killed it. So what do we do next? So we have the leisure battery on the van that we had when it was first new. So it's about probably about four years old to be honest, three or four years old. Um, it's a leisure battery class C. Um, it's a Banner Energy Ball, and it's um, 85 amp. It was fitted to the, the van from new. Decided to swap it for exactly the same battery because I only had 24 hours. Looked online for a company to try and find it from for next day delivery. There was nothing local. The company that I had a discount code for didn't have it in stock, typical. So I ordered it from another company in, in North Wales. I'll put a link on the screen so you can see what they're called. For next day delivery. It was only an extra two pounds for next day delivery. So that's what we did. So this is a Thursday. We're going away on the Friday, straight after work. So I ordered it, hoping for next day delivery. So on the Friday that we were actually going to Wales, the battery did arrive. Um, so fortunately, next day delivery was uh, available. Um, it came in a massive box. The guy left it on the doorstep and said, oh, yeah, it's a battery, open it immediately. I was working at home, Ian was out, and I was like, okay. So I just left it by the front door because it was so heavy, I literally couldn't move it. Um, and then we had the great task of fitting the new battery before we set off on our weekend. So I got home from work at six o'clock, but I had to take my suit off and get changed very quickly. Fortunately, Caroline had packed the van, so we're ready to go. So it was just a case of changing the battery. But of course it was dark, so, and I couldn't find the head torch. So I had a torch in my mouth, and Caroline had a, a big torch that over my head that she kept whacking me in the face with. Um, so, battery under here. Again, really simple. Um, take the cap off, the cover off, there's a battery cover on there, and then there's just literally two bolts that you have to remove, two nuts, sorry, to remove to take the battery out. So it's a really simple process. The good thing with Auto Trail Limit, the van's really easy to work on. Um, just one thing to do before we did that was to shut down the 12 volt system. And in this cupboard here, there's a sergeant control unit, which has a 12 volt shutdown switch on it. And that switch literally, just press that, it disconnects all the 12 volt on the van. And then you're able to switch it over and put it back in and then power it back up again. So just one thing before we actually turn the power off on the van. The van's fitted with a number of security devices, including the tracker. So if you shut down the power, you think someone's trying to nick the van, doesn't it? It does, yes. You get a phone call from the tracking company. So the really good thing on Autotrail, there's an app you can go on and you can inhibit your, um, your tracker for a certain period. So you can go onto the app. I'll show you a screenshot in a second so you can see what I did. But you can go on and press a button and it inhibits the app using your phone, your smartphone. Um, and then you can basically turn it off for a certain period while you do servicing work on it. So we turned it off for an hour while we changed the battery. It didn't trigger the uh, the tracker being alarmed to think someone was trying to steal the van. It's already clever. 
so that was it um, it wasn't really a drama as you can see although it was something that we had to try and do we managed to fit the battery half past six we left didn't we it did feel like a drama at the time yeah. but to be fair when it came it was really it looked quite complicated and it was just in, in and out once you've taken off the uh, the wires, wasn't it? So, so I was surprised actually how simple it is. When he came in at six o'clock and said, right, we've got to change the battery before we can go. I was just like, what the hell are we doing? This is just not gonna happen. And actually the hardest bit about it all was getting the red cover back yeah. on afterwards, wasn't it? That's what took the most amount of time. So yeah. The rest of it was uh, relatively and surprisingly simple. And I'll be honest, I had the cover upside down. It was Caroline who said, have you got it upside down? I was like, no, no, definitely not. It's the right way. Well, so it's, we it's, ended up having <laughs> to check back on our YouTube channel to see which way it should have been right because we filmed the battery a few weeks ago and Caroline was right, I was wrong. Yeah, it's got the it's got writing on it. So everything in your bean tells you that they would have put the stickers on to read as you would look into it, but they're upside down and that is, we yeah, we had to go back and check. But Anyway, that took us five minutes. <laughs> then we were done, and half past rest. six we left and we got to the Lady Margaret's campsite before they, uh, they closed. We were the last people to arrive, but we did get there before eight o'clock, which is most important. So you see, sometimes, I mean, we were doing this and we were like, we should be filming this to explain, but we didn't have any spare hands. And then when we got to Lady Margaret's, we were like, we should film, but you know, sometimes it's, well, we don't we don't generally film like drama no. and things that go wrong. It's mostly a, f a channel that's uh, of of you know of travel. It's not really about things that go wrong. No, we so. could quite easily make things look bad worse than they were, but it's not really a point. But no. we thought we'd share this with anyway because it's quite an interesting yeah. ch ch part of the channel. And I think um, as well, it was easy. So I think the 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 moral of the story is that don't be afraid of doing something that seems like a big job because actually it can be quite simple. Yeah, we're going to close this video with a quick montage of what we've been up to. So yesterday, Caroline went to Crufts. I was left alone with Molly because dogs aren't allowed to go to Crufts. We'll leave you a quick montage of. Some, uh, some of our footage from uh, from yesterday the weekend. Thanks very much for watching. We'll see you next video. See Bye. You soon. The boxers are ready. The ring party are ready. Getting ready to go on our two teams. High flyers have got it all to do. Dog number one is away and it's a clean run on both sides. A brilliant start from both of these teams. It's very close. I think the road runners are just slightly ahead here, but this is a very close run as the final dog goes down the road. Okay, so yesterday Molly got a new toy from Crufts, so she's going to show you how well uh, she's learned the toy's name. If she behaves, ah, get off! <laughs> so we're going to test Molly's ability to learn a new word. She's only had it for a day, so let's see. First of all, Molly, go and fetch me your monkey. Bring it here, bring it here. Thank you. Good girl, good girl, thank you. Okay, so you can see how quickly a border collie learns new words. So she only got this yesterday from Crufts. Sit down, a girl, wait. And this is the new word she learned yesterday is lobster. Molly, go fetch your lobster. Lobster, good girl, good girl. Bring it here then. Mm. Thank you. So as you can see, she's learned a new word yesterday, 12 hours. She's had the toy and she's learned the word lobster. Bring it here then. 